This free acrylic tutorial is being brought to you by the Ginger Cook Academy of Fine Art and Acrylic Painting and contributions from caring viewers like you. Now, on with the show. And now, without further ado, I have the distinguished honor and privilege of presenting to you the Queen of Color, the mother of artists, globally acclaimed, award-winning master acrylic artist, and the star of our show, Ginger Cook, as she once again mesmerizes her audience with the daring do's and don'ts of painting with acrylic. You did it! I did it on time. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> Ain't gonna happen again. Enjoy it, folks. That was it. One time only. All right. So in the next 30 seconds, let's tell you fast what we're going to be doing. We're going to be taking an existing painting that we've done on YouTube. We're going to show you how to do it with a palette knife. And this is uh, the month of uh, May, which is going to be palette knife May. And I think I think you're going to learn even if because there's not a month that starts with a P. No, there's not. So we had you know acrylic April. You know, we don't have a P month, but we do P in every month, but we don't have a P month. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just processing that. Y'all, it's sitting there going, uh-huh. Well, this is what I live with, you guys, right? I was just telling John the other day, this, just this morning, that, um, you know, that I know that I'm not getting shorter as I get older because the toilets seem to be far closer to the ground. So I know I must be getting taller, right? It's got to be it. <laughs> it's got to be it. Don't you think so? I'm thinking so. So, um, yeah, that being so said. So what are we doing? Well, we're going to take this this neat painting that we did before. It was very popular. It was a lily pad and some some trees. And we're going to show you how to do it with a palette knife. Sometimes you want to do a palette knife. Now, the original one was six by eight. We're going to do it a little bit larger. The, the bigger the painting, the little bit easier it is. At least up to at least sixteen by twenty to do it with a palette knife. But it takes a lot of paint. And so, if you can do it on an eight by ten, to get you're learning how to do this. Take your time. Have some fun with this. Practice it. Then, if you get all excited about doing it and stuff, then do it bigger. You know, don't start with your 30 by 40 canvas and then come writing and say, it didn't work. Get get the feel of it, right? It's like anything else. Um, well, we're going to have fun doing it. I'm going to show you a few tricks. And we're and uh, well, as John and I, this video is airing while John and I are probably somewhere in the Baltic. Hard to know, but um, <laughs> from where I'm shooting it now, because I'm presently here in Houston, but we're doing a live premiere with this. We're going to be, if you're joining us for the premiere, I'm going to try very hard to answer your questions. My typing sucks, so um, if I get anything typed on a moving ship, just go yay. Yes? That's all you need to do. That just go yay, and you know, and also I don't spell well. Um, but that's my disclaimer. And you usually use all caps, and she's not yelling. I use all caps and I'm not yelling because I just I just don't want to stop to do all that other stuff, right? <laughs> There's way too many fingers. So involved. you'll know if it's all caps, it's me talking, right? <laughs> and if you're reading the the, the 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 text later, which will stay up, then you'll go, oh, Ginger doesn't spell well, and she uses all caps. <laughs> well, it's good she, she's not good at everything. See, it's just a plus for everybody, yeah. Absolutely. So uh, pull the, pull the camera down onto the table, John, please. Uh, I and, scooted right down. And I've got. Um, um, I've got this painting. I really love this little painting, and a lot of you did it. And I, I have a little 8x10 canvas with just sort of a green background. It's, so, it's got some beautiful soft greens on it, okay? And we're going to do, I'm going to show you some just nice, it's going to be able to have a slightly different look because it's palette knife than this one. But that's fun, isn't it, to see different ways you can learn to paint something? And, and maybe there's a way that you're going to, maybe you're going to discover something about yourself you didn't know. Whoa, Whoa, wouldn't that be good? So our colors are... Uh, phthalo green, I just thought I would use that. There's a lot of mixing going on. Let's just kind of keep it down to a minimum. Ultramarine blue, yellow oxide, cad yellow medium, burnt sienna, magenta, dosnine purple, and cad red medium. Those are our, those are our colors. All right. And I've got a couple of palette knives here. This is a, a Jerry's Artorama palette knife, but it's a, very similar to the shape that Bob Ross used to use. Um, I know that, for instance, like Hobby Lobby sells um, the the official Bob Ross ones. I've had a few of those, and my I'm the problem it, with me is is that um, I get distracted. Have you noticed that? And <laughs> I'll leave a palette knife sitting in the water for a couple of days, and 
I really want the ones that don't rust. Let me put it that way. So the ones I get from Jerry's allow me to be just be ruthless you. with this. And the handles don't swell because, you know why? Because th that's just the way they're made. So I prefer a stainless steel palette knife for that reason. But if you're a sock folder and you wouldn't leave it in the water anyway, then just get whatever you want, right? People true. always say, why do you pick the ones you do? And also I like to wait till they're on sale. Um, but you know what? Palette knives are a great gift. If you see an unusual palette knife somewhere, no, if we have that one with the little claw. Do we have that one with the oh, little claw? Oh, you probably can't reach it. I can't reach it. We have this one. <clears throat> There's a whole set. You can get some Excuse bizarre me. palette knives, right? Like, here's one with a little claw. Do you love that? Looks like a little footy, doesn't it? Looks Ooh. like a frog footy. Like a frog footy. Ooh, <clears throat> Ooh. I don't know. Um, I don't know what one would do with this. But it's fun to just play a little bit. This is where your creative genius comes out. This is where... No two palette knife paintings, if I did this four times, they'd all be slightly different. So don't worry if it's not like mine, but get the principles and relax. With that said, now you know oh, that we're such fun people, you <laughs> needed to subscribe to the channel right away and push that little bell. And there's a thing about that bell. If you don't have that bell, the settings the same. Quotes. And then go look at your settings for notifications. Yeah. You, you have, have to go to your actual settings for that particular YouTube. You're, you're, Otherwise, you may or may not be notified because YouTube feels like we don't want to notify you too many times. Yeah. Well, you know, and I understand that, too, because, for instance, um, how many times have, and this is why we're so slow on sending out newsletters, <laughs> uh, you, you know, I, I'm all, I wear Crocs <clears throat> shoes. I, that's pretty much 99% of all the shoes I own are Crocs. And they seem to like to tell me about their Crocs almost daily. Uh, you know, they could, they don't need to tell me every. I mean, there's only so many you can have. I'm How just many saying, feet do you have? Yeah, and I've got, you know, I think I've got like 30 pairs of Crocs. You know, they wear out. They do. They really wear out. And yeah, but when you have 30 pair, how long is it going to take you to wear out 30 well, pair of Well, the problem is with them is that I found that I wear some more than others. Uh-oh. Yeah. Uh -oh. And I tend to wear my, you know, but anyway, let's, look, let's start painting. Let's not digress, <laughs> So right? quickly. All right, so we're going to start with the background first. And um, what we're going to take is, um, uh, we could have done this with a paintbrush, but we're not going to do it. We're going to take a little ultramarine blue and a little phthalo green and a little tiny bit of cad red medium. See how I'm using this? Kind of squishing that around, right? And I think I want, I didn't put it out, but I think I want a little zinc white. And here's why. If I use titanium, that would make it really light. But I can use a little zinc or um, what, they call, what we call um, mixing, you know, white. mixing white, okay? And it won't change the color that much. And let me show you why not. Let me just show you, take a little bit of this. Here, don't do the whole puddle. Just take it over there and do this. This is what it'll do. See how it's going to lighten it up that much? And I, then I would want to put a little brown with that. See, I want, I want before I go into my giant pile of paint, see if, see if I even like that. Let's try a little purple. So that's okay, but I'm not as wild about that. I might take some of this color now and put it into this, but I, I don't want to get too carried away with that. I think we're just going to leave that the way it is, all right? So now um, let's take this um, palette knife like this, right? I'm going to come up here. This is just sort of a green background. We're just going to sort of scrape down. Like that. We just need some scrapies down like this. And you're, if your background is nice and dry. You're underpainting? You're underpainting, yeah. It's nice and dry. And then you can even, you know, even just scrape some stuff back from it. Like that. Okay, so it's just, it's just here we go. I'm going to scrape it down to about like that. See? And then, see, that, that's sort of interesting, isn't it? Right? And then we're going to do, turn it this way, and we're going to go this way with it. Same thing. We're just going to go this way with it. And then scraping and squishing it. I, I want this to dry, and I want it pretty thin. I, I'm not trying to get any, anything thick here. But there is a certain, um, I guess, brush stroke, except it's a knife stroke that you can kind of see with this. This has to be pretty level. Okay, like that now. All right, so what I've said happened here. Now, could I have used a different knife for going across? I could have. Let me show you what I could have used. Could have used, say, one of these. 
palette knife like this and because that wants to go this way. I could have scraped it like this and done something like this. It just depends on the look I was going for, right? But basically, I've just said that this is my... This is why you have different knives, depending on the effect you want, right? Now, I think that's kind of nice, right? You, you can see a little bit of this background in between. Um, I might scrape George, off... I think the painting's just, done. Might scrape off some stuff. Just a few little light spots in here. I don't think that would make that much difference. Okay, so now what I can do, say with a, we'll put this one away, is um, I'll dry this. Now this is a kind of a thing. Kind of we're drying in between, right? I'm just going to dry this background real quick. And um, you want to tell them you're going to have a little commercial. Or you want to show them some anything? All right, all right. I'm going to give me about two, about 30 seconds to dry this. 15 seconds, not very much. Okay, hold on. And uh, the reason that um, we just don't like to blast you with the hairdryer. Ready? All right. Yep. Here we go, you guys. Ready? Go. I try to get them in 30 second spots, which some of them are in 30 minutes. Three minutes. Well, okay. What can I tell you in 30 seconds about? <coughs> well, I coughed there. I lost three seconds there. I'm, and now you're blabbing. Now, I'm, you now, I'm, now I'm panicked. But listen, don't you panic. Become a member of the Ginger Cook Acrylic Painting Club on Facebook. Join a merry band of artists. It's free, it's fun, and you can place to show your acrylic paintings off and, and get tips and get all the gossip about John and I. And they were the first ones to know we got engaged. You could have been in on no if you were a member, too. So I'm saying maybe that real they, fast. Maybe they didn't know that. Oh. Well. <laughs> Did you know? <laughs> You ought to watch more videos, then you'd find out. So be sure to share this in your playlist. If you're enjoying the video you're watching, I hope you are. Surely you are. And uh, thanks for subscribing to our channel. Ah, back, back. I'm telling you. All right. So technology. So here's what we want to do now. We're going to do another layer. We're going to. I'm going to show you this little trick. We're going to use a smaller one to mix with. I want a little lighter color now, so I'm going to take a little of this yellow oxide, a little bit of the stalo green. Okay, and a little bit of burnt sienna, and I want kind of an olive green, okay? a little bit brighter than the background, slightly dry, brighter than that. So let's take a little bit of um, the zinc white and put in and add to that. And we're not going to mix it up very well. Do you see how we didn't mix it up very well? See that? Now, um, now let's take this knife again. Put it, kind of flatten it out on here like this. Now I'm going to hold it very, very flat. Okay, now very flat, and I'm just going to barely touch this, and I'm going to drag this over this background that's dry. And I'm pushing a little harder. See what I just did? Okay. Just do some interesting foliage back here. Doesn't have to be much, but isn't that interesting? And all by itself, right? This is our first layer of interesting foliage. <laughs> well, what else would you call it? Sort of interesting foliage. Now, what if I came back here like this and uh, just came across here like this and drug it? See, it's got very flat. You see that, right? Very flat. And just drug it back and forth like this. And you're and, not using a lot of pressure, just enough to... Yeah, just, just so it barely, t just, just so it makes a mark on the canvas. You know what I mean? Like that. So now, um, that's kind of cool, right? So that's neat. Now what if I add a little bit more of the zinc white to that? Okay. Let's do it again. Just a little bit, not too much. Let's come up here and do one more, a little bit lower this time, not up so high. And uh, this is our next layer of something brighter. Almost has a sponge technique, doesn't it? And look what I just got all over my... Oh. How did you do that? I got into this paint here. So, all right, so this is an excellent thing. So what happens when you do that? Why don't you just take your tub of towels? You just leave that green down there, though. I know, I just laid the green down. It's just tragic, isn't it? It is. I'm going to just wipe this off. And pray for happy accidents. 
This one's not so happy. Too early to be that. Too early for happy accidents, isn't it? <laughs> all right. Well, that's the best we can do. And we might want to just. That's all right. Where was the palette knife I did that with? Where was that palette knife? It was the Bob Ross one, wasn't it? Oh, it was this one. It was this one. So let's make sure we don't have any white. Maybe I had the white on the knuckles. Who knows? Well, all right. You don't want. You got white yeah, all over your well, hands now. Do I? Yeah. Where? Oh, yeah, right here, maybe. Okay. Well, <laughs> note to self. Watch watch that, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, I'm going to do the same thing with a little palette knife. I'm going to come up here, put a little more of this zinc white in it. Okay, like that, and a little bit of yellow oxide. Green this up a bit. Okay. And I think I want a little bit of a little green in it, just a little bit greener. And if we, t t that's, okay, so if we want to blue this up, let's take a little purple and put in it. I want to gray it, but I, I don't want it to be too bright. In other words, I'm, I'm toning this down just a bit, yeah? And would you, what, what color you I tone add a little with? bit of dazzling purple to it, and mm. see how I kind of grayed it up a little bit? So again, you don't want to mix it up too much. Now we're just going to go, um, I'm just going to tap up something like this. Suggest that maybe there's something here like this, just using the tip. Here's a little bit of, just, just a little bit of something here like this. This is still kind of background. And I like this yellow oxide color. I'm going to get a little more of that. And um, now I'm going to take this and, um, oh, I think what we want is that longer one. Where'd this one go? Yeah, here. Let's take this long one now. Now look, it's going to flatten this out, right like this. Try to avoid this white. Boy, that's really in the way. Try to avoid this. Now I'm going to cut it like this. Do you see, see this? Now I'm going to just come up like this and suggest some foliage going up this way. And this is a, I want some nice long, um, Grass is going back up here. All right, so far so good. Now let's pick a little bit more of that white color with it. That's the zinc white. Now look at how I'm scraping and flattening it out. Do you see that? Put a little yellow oxide with it. There you go, flattening it out. Now let's try it one more time. You know, when you're painting stuff, you want to come up in value. Just want it on the edge, right? You want to come up in value when you're doing things like this. You've got some kind of going this way. Okay. There. All right. So I've got, got something here going. All right. So far, so good. Okay. Now, you're going, oh, no, there's a now. Ha! <laughs> There's a now. There's always a now. Okay. So this is pretty wet. Now, what I, what I know for sure is that I've got a... Starting right here about, you know, two fingers below my pond level and about two fingers, maybe three up here. And I still got white on that finger. Look at that. It's interesting. All right. So I know that I'm going to just put a few dots in here like that. So I'm going to very carefully scrape out a tree here. I know I've got one coming up here like that. And I've got... If I need to do that, see, I know I, I, I know I'm going to want that tree. So I just, I don't want a ridge in it. So I'll take this, so we're going to turn the canvas sideways. I'm going to take this dark green color, add some ultramarine blue, and a little bit of um, yellow. Okay, that's just a, your, what is that? Okay, a little bit of yellow. Okay, now that's very bright. My gosh, could that be any brighter? I keep getting into that white paint. All right, now we're just going to take a bunch of this burnt sienna and grab a little of this green color and mix with it. And that will gray this green down and make it more of a swamp olive green, which is what we're going for, yeah? All right, so I'm going to come this way with this tree that I've sort of figured out where I want it. So I made a few little marks. Like that. I'm going to just go ahead and put that tree in. And what you want to keep in mind, trees are wider at the bottom than they are at the top. And you might, you don't want to come too far, but you're going to come over here like this. Say there's this tree. 
All right, now it doesn't have any highlights on it yet. We just started with kind of a dark color, but we know that tree's there. And I know that I've got a tree here. And I want to do this while it's still wet. I don't want to dry anything. I can even come down here like this and uh, like this and just... This one's about three fingers over from the edge. There's This is about a finger and a half. This is about three fingers from that one. That helps where I place these. And these kind of join down here like that. I'm going to say there's this tree. And I can pull this down like that. Okay, now, so I know where my trees are, yeah? Now, the trick is... Um, at what point do you um, start lightening up and adding the lighter colors? Do you do it when it's real wet? Do you wait till it's dry? What do you do? And how are you going to, you know, how are you going to get these trees to stand out? Well, if you took just some zinc white like this while this is still wet and turned it sideways, and then you come, because we're going to say the light's coming from this direction, yeah? You just get a new uh, towel. I think I'm getting it's more paint from my towel than I am from there. Okay, now. If I flatten this out like this, and I've got my zinc white, and I come here like this, and I pull this this way, like what you're doing is you're mixing colors on the canvas. But this is pretty wet. Now, if we did um, if we did titanium, what would happen? Because now, now I want you to see the difference. If we did titanium, let me just pull this this way. That makes it really white. That makes it really white. So we don't. So then you're sitting and saying, "Well, did I need to, to mix anything?" Well, you know, there's glazing. Glazing can happen too. But I mean, that's. But I know that I've got this tree here, and I might do it with these others. Except I'll take a little bit of yellow oxide and white, and um, just warm that up. It doesn't need to be so white, does it? Oh my gosh! I, all right, I'm good. Didn't lose it. All right, so I'm going to come on top of this. Barely touch it in a couple places. Still wet. Yeah. I'm going to do that with this one too. Now, this is very wet, but what I'm doing is making grooves in the record. Does that make sense? Making grooves in this record. Okay. So I'm saying those are my uh, trees, but now the, uh, what's happened is I, I've kind of lost my dark. So if I take a little bit of purple this dark green color and say I want something a little darker this way what would happen right up in here how much of this could I bring back over just doing this to do see what I'm doing so there's a it's sort of a um, there you go like that there you go I'm bringing that over like that and I'm gonna bring it over here at the base of this tree all right like that all right, that's that's working pretty good. Let's do, I want some phthalo blue, which you didn't have any out, but we're going to get that out right now. And we're going to play a little bit with colors. Take a little bit of phthalo blue and add to this green. And uh, there we go. I want a little bit of this phthalo blue color coming this way on this tree. As a, See, I've got it on this side of the knife now. These are back in the woods, more in the shade. All right, so I've got a couple little trees back here. I've got this one, and I like some of that phthalo blue color on this one too, so I'm barely touching it now. And I'm not doing the whole thing. I'm just doing it in sections. Let's lighten it up. Just doing it in a few sections. And I can come back. And um, see, wherever there's a light, there's a dark. So if you've got, you've got to, you know, distinguish this a little bit. So at this point, we're a little, we're a little thick. So we have to dry that. We can't do much more to that tree at this point than, than, than dry it. We can, we can lighten it up. I do want to make this wider at the bottom here. I know that. I know that this tree here, I'll keep, I can keep enlarging it right here. It needs to be bigger here. Hmm? Okay, so we're just gonna gonna just sort of leave that as the base, right? Now, with that's drying, okay. 
that's that's this has got to dry a little bit and I want to just skinny this up just a hair so I'm going to just scrape off a little of this because I don't want it quite that that big does that make sense so I'm going to re redo the background and I can just take it up here you can in other words you're not stuck with something if you didn't quite get it right you're not totally stuck with it yes and yes See how I just sort of was able to reshape that? Okay. So now, now what? And do I need to reshape somewhere else? And do I need a little bit more dark blue here? This is too wet to do that with. You can just tap it on there, but it's a little wet. Okay. All right. So, so far we've got sort of a good mood, right? We've got some trees in here. We've got a mood going up here. You want to make sure this tree is going all the way off to the top of the canvas right like that make sure you've got it all the way up here like that now this is a good time to just take a moment and dry everything is it i think so i guess i could do a few lily pads let's do a few lily pads if we we can do a few lily pads too while we're waiting let's do that all right so we we i want you to talk about i want to talk about lily pads <laughs> they're um I want you to think of rectangular el of, uh, envelopes going this way, not circles. Okay, so let me just draw that on the chalkboard here. Do I have a chalkboard? Can you get it? I do. I do. I have a chalkboard, and I'm going to take my tub of towels and clean my chalkboard and tell you great things. Let's move this out of the way while it's drying. Here. It's always something interesting on a chalkboard, isn't there? If you're wondering what that was about, that was uh, some interesting illustrations from the other night. Um, we always are doing fun things. That was the painting we did of the stars and the cliffs. And that particular Far horizons. demonstration that it was about. Yeah, on how to palette. It's another great palette knife demonstration. Okay, so there's our tub of towels. And if you're wondering what I keep talking about, these are our, my favorite little things. Um, I have them all over the house, but uh, nothing takes paint off and, you know, just cleans up everything better than these. Leaves your hands nice. And there you go. We like them. So, um, all right. So we had a comment here about, oh, yeah. So I want you to think about, we're going to talk about a new way to think about lily pants. Yes and yes. New way. So let's start with, um, let's kind of dry this off. And then we want a piece of chalk. Okay, so. If you will notice, I want you to think about shapes because everybody wants to do a lily pad like that and then they wonder why their picture looks like heck. <laughs> <laughs> so, I want you to think of a box like this, an envelope. Hmm? If they've got to go sideways and when they're back here, they're little. You know, they're, they're small, they, and then, you you know, they're farther away. So they're really, yes, and, and real, if you saw a lily pad, the, the closer they get, they're a little bit rounder. They have the, you know, but they're really like two parts. Does that make sense? And and, and if, you're, if you're talking about water, you know, then we're doing them. If you were to just Google some, if, you, if you're not sure about the shape, but they're, but you've got to have them more, I guess some people would say they're heart-shaped. That that would be one way to look at them. That they they don't always uh, line up. The the little um, V's in the front of them don't always line up the same. They cluster, but basically to get them looking like they're flat on water, you've got to um, to have them more elongated than than ever. And you can have them overlapping. Okay, but um, you know just a simple oval shape can be very good. If you look at Monet's, um, you know he did a lot of palette knife thick textured uh, lilies and you know you, you want sort of this I guess Pac-Man shape isn't it with the little little yeah. thing there it's almost a Pac-Man <clears throat> shape isn't it yes it is and so whatever whatever kind of cements it in your mind right that's what you're going for so you but but you're not doing circles that that you know you're not doing yeah yes and yes Yes and yes, new circles. So, so we're going to take some just different greens, thalo green and yellow and, you know, some different greens. Not, and we're going to start down here in the front. I'm going to do our first one. Remember, they're bigger as they come into the center. 
the closer they are to you, they're bigger. I'm just going to swirl some around like this. Maybe it's one that's kind of coming off here. And the idea is to have, a, you want the, uh, a lot of different greens when you make them. See how I've got almost a marbling effect, okay? And I'm saying that um, here's a green that's coming here. I'm just sort of swirling it around like that. Okay, and I'm going to say I've got another one here. You need almost to pick up new paint colors for each one. They're, they're not all the same um, uh, uh, looking in the same direction, but they're all, they've all got to be level on the, um, on the canvas, right? They've all got to be level. Um, as you come back here, to do a kind of a pattern with them. I went to through five, and maybe we got a little pattern here. Let's get another one of these down here in the corner. Let's get a little phthalo green and yellow. It wasn't anything that bright. Let's put some yellow oxide with it. A little bit of magenta. Now look at this one. See, you can come back over the top of these and really get some interesting colors. You just float some colors on the top. Isn't that, isn't that interesting? And then, it's, again, it's like I say, it's a little bit of a zinc white. You'll make this a little bit lighter. Well, as we come back here, we're just not going to talk about these that much. They're here, but we're just going to use the tip of the knife and suggest some. A little more blue, a little more thalo blue. The further backs are going to be smaller. They're smaller. They have to be smaller, right? They're just, they're, you were suggesting something. And they, and they clump, you know? They like to clump together. So they're smaller, but they're clumping. So you might have, you know, a few like that. Kind of making, almost making little circles now. Let's take a little bigger one here. And uh, maybe put one here like that. All right, maybe I got one sticking this way out. So there's my, um, oh, I think that's nice. And it's got somebody coming out this way, too. Let's just kind of come in this way. There, all right. So I've got to use the heel of that. So I've got a little space in the middle. We still have room to put flowers, right? Now, what can I do with some of these colors? Well, I can do some really pretty leaves. I, I had some really nice green. Let's see, let's put some white with that. There we go. I had some very nice leaves back here. Grown up on some sort of vine. Let's put some yellow oxide with that. Yeah, you, you, when you put it on the canvas, you're not applying a lot of pressure, right? You're just kind of plopping yeah, it down. Yeah, I'm barely, yeah, I'm barely touching it, right? I'm just saying that these are some, you know, there was this nice sort of, and you notice in the picture, there was this nice group of, kind of, it's an interesting plant, right? I had that, and then I had some of, there was some of this light plant going up here like that, that we didn't really discuss too much, but it was definitely growing here. And there was something growing on this bank, we don't know what. Let's get along here like that. Maybe there was something a little darker. Maybe let's take a little ultramarine blue with that and thalo green and say, here's a little bit of darker. Now I'm going to start pulling in some water going down this way. See what I'm doing here. Okay, now, now what? Now we're going to take a little bit of this lighter color. Well, this is still wet, right? And uh, this is sort of wet on wet palette knife painting. Just pull some brush strokes back in here forth like this. Well, you know, this very. I think I think it's kind of interesting. Now I need a. I need a. I need. I need. Where's my. Bob Ross style palette knife. That's the one here. Name. Okay, so I need something coming up here. I need a brighter green thing here with white and let's take some of this and it's a great thing in greens, isn't it? Look at that. Look at how the, that's a nice green. I like that green. Let's put it over here somewhere. Here we go. Here's another green. 
Now let's take some white with this. And um, that's pretty too. I want it more of a gray blue color. Let's put some thalo blue with that. Okay. All right, we got to scrape off the palette knife. There we go. All right, there we go. I want that kind of color. I want to say that here. Got some nice, a little bit brighter. Yes and yes, a little bit brighter. Just on the edge now. Find nothing happening, go get more paint. Okay. So see the depth we've created with this? I mean, it's a pretty decent depth, I think. It's just pretty amazing, really. Think about it. Some of this color here back in the background, I'm not getting it. I'll just pull a little of it anyway. All right, so I've got there's some really, I haven't put the flowers in yet, and I need to work on these trees, and they're still very wet. So at this point, we do really have to dry everything, okay? <laughs> I can't talk in anything else, huh? Nope, we're going to dry it, okay? All righty. You know, when John and I first started out teaching acrylic painting, our goal was to take people who had never painted before and step by step bring them up to the level of a master artist. And when we first started the Academy, we started out with a, you know, a $300 camera and a, and a $50 microphone and a $500 computer. And over the years, we've gotten four or five cameras shooting our videos. We've gotten, uh, you know, terrific sound systems. We've gone to elaborate larger paintings, much more in-depth videos. And as you guys got better, we got better. So if you want to really, really tune in and hone your artwork to the highest level, Come see us at the Academy of Fine Art and Acrylic Painting and start at the beginning and watch your mediocre rise. Meteor is that the right word? What is that? Mediocre? What? Fast rise? What are we saying? Fast track. Fast track. Get on the fast track. That's it. To be a really successful acrylic painter. Thanks. Okay, so this is still slightly wet, but it's tacked over. Does that make sense? Skinned over. Skinned over. Skin skinned over. Okay, that's a good thing for it right so okay so then what can we do we got some beautiful texture on here you can see it just it's sort of it's an interesting painting it kind of comes alive doesn't it so the question is you know what could I do for instance if I were to take a brush and do some of this light color right here maybe add a little bit more white to that now when you bring a brush out is it still a palette knife painting it's still a palette knife painting all right so now I'm going to take the brush right here like this because it's and I'm going to drag it across the texture on this tree. Okay, barely touch it. Let's get a little bit more light to that. Okay. All right, now that's, that's the effect you get if you wanted to come back and you know, maybe touch it up with a brush, and it was just an angle brush, and you can do that, right? You could do that, right? You could just sit there. I want this a little bit wider here. Just not such a perfect tree. Here you go. All right, and then I want a little bit more of this blue-gray color here. You could come this way with it, barely touch it. You've already got some of your darks, and bring this around, and you let it skip over some of this. See, and bring that around. And the texture on that tree is almost impossible to get otherwise, you know. So that's really, I think that's that's very nice. And I would do the same thing to these two 
also here. Just come back over here and going to turn this a little sideways and uh, just uh, barely touch it. Let it let the texture that the palette knife gave you um, create the create that and create that mm. kind of green tree. And um, I'm not sure that I couldn't go a little bit wider right here on this one. Let me just turn this sideways. And, and this one could be a little wider at the top here. So I mean, it's possible that you can reshape something if you need to. So you're not, I mean, you're not stuck. I mean, once you claimed it was a palette knife, you're not unstuck with it there. And let's put a little bit of the dark here. We're going to take a little bit of this dark color. Do we have any? And pull some of that back. Okay, you can pull a little dark back if you need to. Here's our lighter color. Sometimes wherever there's a light, there's a dark. So sometimes it doesn't hurt to. Don't make this even like a striped tie. Okay, so you can kind of, you're getting some lights and darks in your picture. And this one we're going to lighten up, not as much as we did in that one, but a little bit. Now let me just do that one with the palette knife and show you the difference. Because And that's how you do it with a brush. This is how you do it with a palette knife. And we know it's lighter. And let's bring it up a little bit more. But yellow oxide here. Okay, a little bit of a lighter green. So you can do it with a knife too. In other words, you can come here and say, okay, I want this. And I'm going to do it. I want a little more texture still here. And I can do it with a knife. So yes, you can. Okay. So anytime you build up texture on a painting, it's not a bad thing, right? There. So there you go. Okay. So yes, you absolutely can. Now, where we want to come in here with the, you know, with um, our other, uh, other design elements. Okay. It's and this is something you can do, and I and I highly recommend it. Don't just limit yourself. Does that make sense? Um, I'd take a. We have some very nice and wet brush like this, and you know that we want some very nice, more rounded foliage, which you can still get. You don't need to overdo it, but you can do just a couple like that. Maybe you're going to say there's something there. Um, there. Just don't be afraid to do that. Um, I wanted something very light on the top of these coming down like this. Just said that there was something coming down this way. And uh, even over here there was something. So a little brush can be, can be, you know, can add some elements and, uh, to it that you wouldn't necessarily get otherwise. Now, um, I like our water lilies uh, pads. Uh, pa pad, we have the lily pads. I like those. Now what happens if you then take a brush and drag on a little bit of highlight, just barely touch the brush, and just say, okay, I want a little bit of a lighter edge here. Maybe I want to say this is a little bit lighter here. Barely touching it now, because we've skinned it over. Maybe I want this edge lighter. And it catches on part of the, little, of the, the shape. It wants to catch on the shape. So if you kind of drag it over, you're going to find... Um, that I mean, your, the, your palette knife would do it too, but look look how it's catching in the uh, the creases of that lily pad and lightening it up. And that's what I'm talking about. So sometimes you can have a little brighter one here. Let's do something a little bit more jewel toned here. Let's, the brighter the greens are in front, right? And um, just don't don't worry if you got it a little bit too bright or you want to change it back to a little bit dark. The thing is that you're dragging, you're not painting. If you start covering it up, then you sort of defeated the purpose. Does that make sense? So you can do it like this. You can also do it with um, uh, you can do it with your um, you know palette knife. Let's let's show you how you would do that with the palette knife too. So you can do it both ways. All right. 
So, all right, here's a little bit of the light green. I'm going to kind of flatten it out. I want this a little bit lighter on top, right? Yes? And I can get that to happen. Want a little bit lighter here. These ones in front, I want a little lighter than they are being. And I'll mix up a little lighter blue. And I want some of this just a bit lighter in the center here on some of these. Okay. And as they go back, we'll gray it out a little bit. And I kind of, I've always liked, and we'll see, we're out of... Yellow oxide. Where did I put that? Here. This is a this is a painting that needs quite a bit of this color. Okay. We'll but you can see how I mean you can see from the two of them. Can you see them side by side? We're we're really getting this painting. But the thing is that this um, there's a serendipityness about a painting like this that you won't get with a brush. There's a, you know, you're going to find yourself um, surprised by some of the effects you get, right? I mean, it, it just, it, it's interesting to me. Like, for instance, I could take a little phthalo blue and white and um, maybe a little ultramarine blue. If I wanted to just, just had a little bit of blue in this. Well, that's that's from these flowers. We haven't done that yet. Maybe we'll just hold off on that for a minute. All right, so what if I wanted to reshape some of these? And I can see this looks a little blobby. It could be reshaped. So how do you do that? Well... I'm glad you asked. That's, that, yeah, that's a good question. How do you reshape these ones, right? Well, what you can do is you can take a little purple and blue, okay? Maybe even some magenta with it. Kind of get some new colors in this water. And, you know, this is where a small brush can be, and you can come in and you can um, you can, you can shape a, a little green with that. You can just go ahead and you can reshape a couple. Like right in here, I know that I want this to be sort of a little notch this one out. Maybe I'll notch this one out here. So there's a couple of these right here. Might put a notch in this one. There's a little notch here. See, I mean, you can get a little shape to these very nicely, okay? And um, then you just have to ask yourself, where, where, where's my lights? Where's my darks? If I want a little bit of a, a light edge, I could think, think that's one thing you can do. Is you can come back and you can define an edge if you need to. Do you need to define an edge right like that? Just like kind of like we did with the tree? Is that helpful? Remember, wherever there's a light, there's a dark. So if this is too close to the same value as the water. So I'm going to lighten this one up a bit. Okay. And the one thing I know about lily pads is that I want my lily pad to have at least five or six colors on it. Here's a little bit of magenta and white. And um, maybe this one's got just a bit of that color on it. I don't, you know, maybe some of them are dying off, not as bright. Um, let's see, a little yellow oxide and, and um, or a little bit of cad red medium in yellow. How about a little orange color on these? There you go. Now, barely touching it, but we're... And again, and you don't want the same colors on each one. I mean, maybe this one's got that orange color and that one behind it doesn't. So you see how we're kind of doing that? So then you have to, then, okay, so we got that. We're, we're pretty good here. Um, what about these flowering things back here? Well, I think you could add a few little dots of things coming back here if you wanted. You know, you're not, it's not written in stone just because you did a palette knife that you couldn't do something else. I just wouldn't get too carried away with it. Don't get it too busy. Okay, something like that. So we've got a little bit more interest back there. Um, I would like a little bit of separation between these leaves, this right here. So I might just come back in here in a couple places with the brush and carve out some definition that I didn't have. You can put the darks back. 
don't be afraid to come back and do that either, right? If you need, if you need that or you need to say, all right, so there's a bit of a bank right here. And I'm just going to say it's here. Or I want this leaf a little brighter or maybe a little bit bluer on the, in this case, lighter here. You know, do I want this to show up more? You know, you've got the texture on here, and that's what the palette knife gave you is this beautiful texture. So you've got that. So if you had to come back and throw in a couple leaves like that, you can. And um, using the same paint, and you still got, like I say, you've got some texture that gives you some leeway. And your paint's nice, you know, there we go. There, let's pull something down here like that. Okay, you've got these flowering vines. I think we're very close to um, what we had before as far as the paintings. But um, I think what I'd like here is a little bit of burnt sienna. And uh, I just barely touched it now. Let's see, I don't want that dark. A little yellow oxide with it. Did I want to put some, remember this is brown enough now where I can almost put some, you know, knot holes in the tree like that. Just marvelous what you can do when you're playing off texture. So let's go ahead and put these flowers in. And I'm going to show you a way to do that. Instead of using the palette knife, we're going to use a modeling paste. And I'm going to show you how to get some real texture with these flowers on the back, okay? This is um, uh, just regular modeling paste from Golden. You could use it. We could use gels too. Modeling paste will dry a little quicker. Let's see where I can put that right back over here. All right. And um, someone says, "How do you use modeling paste?" Well, you can you can use modeling paste or gels. You can add it to your paint and it. It's a lot cheaper than paint, so if you were doing this big, it would expand it out a little bit for you so that you didn't have to use as much paint. I almost go 50-50 on it. So now I've got, I want to do this magenta. Does that weaken your color doing that? Uh, it will. Well, it, it won't until about, after, oh, usually it's about 50%. Now it's a little ultramarine blue and magenta, and here's modeling paste. Okay, you can see that that's there. Then I'm going to get a little bit of white like that. I'll mix that in. Okay. So I've got sort of two tones here. Okay, now I'm going to scoop up using this small brush. I'm going to scoop up and I'm going to drop this. I'm going to roll it on my brush like this. And using this the tip, I'm going to drop this like little dots on here like that. Okay, see how I did that? I'm going to start with the darker colors first. Just on the tip of the brush, I'm going to drop these little flowers here, just like we did in this one. Okay, you come down here like that. There's one. And I'm really making this thick. It's very thick. It's sticking out. That's what the impasto was for. It's not, fl it's not, your acrylic paint, when the water goes out of it, even when you put it on thick, it goes and it, the water and it dries flatter. When you add the modeling paste, what it's going to do for you is um, uh, it's going to keep the texture. It's going to keep the height for it. It's going to give you that great impasto um, look. I got a couple. Are they these. making an impasto medium as well? Well, there is an impasto medium from. Um, Matisse, which is not everybody can get. Everybody can get modeling paste. Okay, so it's basically the same thing. Oh, no. Oh, the, good. The one from Matisse is is lovely to use. You should. I would highly recommend it. They're the only one that makes anything like it. Okay. All right. So you see, I've got these sort of clumped together. They're not stars on a flag. That's like these. These two touch. That one's there. These two. I've got three there. I'm gonna put one up here. I think we want one in here like this, kind of tucking behind here like that. All right, so those are my flowers. Now I'm going to come up here with the lighter color. Did you see that with the, with the light, with a bit of, bit of white on the brush? Now I'm going to say, remember, the light's coming from this way. So the top part of this flower, just going to tap it on there. I just only need white, really, on the brush with a little magenta probably is all I need. And I'm just going to tap 
more white. And it's going to mix on there. Don't do it in the middle. Do it on the edges. Okay, probably between 4 o'clock and 3 o'clock. Okay. I like this color a little better. Just touching it. Tapping it in there. I'm going to suggest that maybe there's one here. And I'm going to roll it off the brush. That's important. Every once in a while, roll this paint off your brush. Just you're mixing it into that little blob. You're kind of poking it in there. I think poke is a good word. Yeah, poke's a great word. You're poking a pig. <clears throat> yeah, I'm just gonna. There's a little bit of. Okay. So say there they are. They're back there. Oh, good. And they've got some really pretty. Um, they're bright enough, right? You're seeing they're subtle. They're bright enough, but you're here's a little bit of mixing white here on this one. They're bright enough, but you're still. All flowers need a dark side. They need a dark underside. You can't just start with you know you you need a shadow side to them. Maybe that's a better way to put it. Make sure you. Haven't lost your shadow side. Okay. So I think those are there. Okay. Now these front ones, these front uh, flowers, right, up here, again, um, modeling paste is a little tough to use on those. So this is where I might want to gel. Because the modeling paste is very awkward to use. Like you're going, well, you're showing us all this stuff. Yeah, I am. Here's some, here's some, um, here's a gel. This is a, it's softer. It's not so thick. This is a high solid gel gloss. Okay. So if I add that to my paint, um, it's gonna it's gonna be a little bit more easy, uh, movable. Does that make sense? Mm. Then this modeling paste is really thick, like peanut butter. Okay. And that's hard to shape a flower. Rather, you can do little blobs perfectly, but then you're talking about these flowers. So I want uh, probably some white, and this is. This, this white's too thick for that. Here's some white, a little yellow oxide, and some gel right there, like that. Okay, and I'm going to do, again, about 50% gel. Going to mix it pretty well on the brush. Now, I've still got some texture on the brush, but for instance, if I come up here like this and tap this flower on, see what I'm doing? It's still going to give me some texture. Coming out almost in a fan shape. Pinch the brush, just got an angle brush, scooping it up on one side, and uh, now take a little bit of that white paint, and I can barely, I'm barely touching it now, and it's really, and so you've got this nice, there you go, like this, there's a flower, see, now, Let's do another one. Now the flowers get smaller as they come back, and a good place to put a flower is where you felt like you didn't get a great uh, lily pad. So here we're going to make these kind of in the gold tones, right? It gets smaller as it goes back. So the what about the ones way back here? They are itty bitty, so maybe it's just a dot of paint back here to suggest. There's a few little flowers back here. How, how far away in the distance you want to say this stuff is? See, see how far? See how I got some depth just by doing that. And uh, maybe we'll do one here. Okay, let's just do one here. It's sort of an in between. It's like Goldilocks lily pads. Scoop up some of the texture of the modeling paste, and or rather the gel medium. I'm just coming up here like a kind of like a fan. This one I'm going to make bigger right here. This one's going to be nice and big and I'm going to use the most of the gel with this. And I'm going to say this is one of my bigger ones. Okay. I'm 
drop a little bit more of that and kind of work that gel where I want it. If this is an angle brush. This is a, a, a half, one quarter inch silver silk. It's very soft. And it's, it's working. softer this. than the green ones. Softer than the green ones. And so it's, it's, it's wanting to do this. It's, it's, pli it's very pliable. Does that make sense? Okay, I've got some nice looking flowers here. I feel like I almost need one here. Even though I didn't have one in the other picture, I want one here. It grew. It grew. You know, what's a bigger canvas? It grew between the paintings. It's a bigger canvas. Okay, bigger canvas. And do we have anything out here like this at the bottom? Where's my name? There's this one. Let's just do a couple here. Just, just a few dots of something here, right? All right, that's a nice color. And this is a nice color. Could we use this color anywhere on this tree? <laughs> could this? Could we? Where have... else can we use the color? Well, I always like to say that right, right here. This, this, this. Could this color be used anywhere? So if I turn this sideways and pull this toward me, dot it on a couple places on this tree. Just maybe there's a little light there. like the sound effects. It's not the whole thing. It's just little dots of highlights, right? You're not doing the whole thing. You're just, you're just saying that maybe there is something here. Okay. All right. So now, um, let's, we haven't done any centers or anything. Let's skin this over one more time, and we'll, then we'll add the final highlights. You need a long dry or a shorter dry? Oh. You really want to seal it good? We're going to seal it pretty good. We're going to dry, really dry this and then come back with our brush and just add some highlights, okay? All right. Okay. Okay. So, somebody said, why don't you guys have t-shirts? And because you know, if you've been watching our videos, uh, most of the time that's what I wear. I mean, I only wear stuff like this if I'm not painting because I get paint over everything. So we actually came up with a really cute uh, t-shirt that's designed for you to be able to not only paint in it, get paint on, but um, what, what, are you, what are you thumbing for here? What is this? Let them know. Be up in the upper right hand corner. They can see a little sample. Oh, well, they're going to ask me why I'm not wearing a t-shirt because they haven't come yet. It takes two weeks to get them. This is like you're on the breaking news, the ground floor of this t-shirt stuff. But we, w we did a lot of research to make sure that the t-shirts that uh, we got affiliated with were the highest quality. And um, we know a lot of people that own that brand. And we would encourage you to check it out and, because not only do they have sizes. Sorry. Of course I have sizes. What do you mean? Well, I, what I mean is that you can go from like extra small to like 5X. And we have, you can pick out the colors. We keep the design, but you can pick out the style, the colors, and customize that t-shirt that, you know, kind of fits you. And what I think is really cool is we're going to be having all kinds of new designs coming up. This is the very first one. And come join our Merry Band of Artists and let everybody know that you paint with us. <laughs> Took that one right down to the wire, didn't you? Yeah. All right. So look, isn't this nice? I mean, you can see the difference between the two paints. They both, they we'll both are back nice. Out a little bit so we can see that. You can kind of see that, but I mean, they're really nice, right? So then, this is where, I think that you know, you, let's take. What if we were to take a little white paint, and say these? What if we were to just get a little bit more lighter on these front flowers, just using our angle brush now? So this is dry. Just touching another little layer of white, right, in these ones. This right there, just a couple. Brighten this one up a little bit. Maybe the same thing here. Not the whole thing, just a few dots of light. Here, that's, that's a two tone flower, right? Now, see how these come forward when we did that? And, and then we put the others, others farther back, right? So you don't, sometimes it's just a couple dots of white, right? And I like the pink centers in these, up there, so we're going to do that too. I really thought the pink centers were nice. So I'm going to add. Um, I don't know if we like the pink centers. Do we like the pink centers? I'm thinking about that. I like them in this. I think pink adds to it. There we go. Just, 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 it just like a few. Looks like a couple of them purple in the background later. Yeah, and then the, had almost some of it's almost had a little purple tone back here to them. But you know, th there we go. Let's we'll just put a little pink and purple in the 
centers here just to kind of give it a little bit of color right you know we don't need a lot just a few dots to suggest right because your what your mind's doing is just suggesting those are lily pads and then I think we remember how we made the background color so then I want do I want to come back through here like this break any of these up did I think did I think I got this one a little bit too um, big I can turn tone it down see what I mean you can come back and you can play with this a little bit reshape and fine-tune yeah, just reshape and fine-tune it you're not repainting the whole thing but you know if you need to you know do that you can and then one of the tricks when you're doing a flowers like these is one of the tricks is to um, always have something kind of passing through these in other words um, you want you don't want to you know you've got a flower you know you've got a light stem like sorry, white here let's get something lighter you've got a light stem like this maybe coming this way right but have something over a few of the flowers don't have them you know what I mean have you know you can just sit there and say maybe something put one in the background right just there you go. I like this. I had a kind of a nice bright thing, green thing coming up here like that. This is where you I think we said that there was something coming down here like that on this one. Okay. Now we've determined a bank. Um, I think I'd like this this water lily a little bit brighter than we had it. Just um Maybe flatten that this one out a bit. It could just got a little unwieldy, right? Um, it did too. This one, this one here, just I think I want the the just maybe want two here. So in other words, you're not nothing's written in stone. If you if you did something and you don't quite like it, you take it out, right? And you can also put it back too. You can say, okay, I want this water lily coming. Scoop up some of your paint. Just like you were using a palette knife, just scoop up a blob of this paint and, uh, and refocus it. Okay? So now I wanted a little bit of light blue back here in the water, like that. Okay? We're pretty close to finished. And it's mighty fine too. And I, I, I really like the effect this gets. I mean, both paintings are nice, but, um, but here's the thing: people, if you guys are selling artwork, people love texture. They want to buy it. If they're going to look at this picture and that picture, they will buy the one with the texture 99% of the time. They're going to want the one with the texture. Like here's a little bit of texture here, and I'm going to mix it into this. And if I wanted to say that these little globs here just add a little bit more texture to them, the ones that were coming up here in the background. See, people like the texture. They really, really do. That's that's a that's one of the things, and and it's a it, it, it's a it's a tough world, and you know when you're. And if you were to zoom in, can you zoom in on this, on how much texture there is on these? Oh yeah, I have been. Have you? Can you That's see true. how much? And, and and so when you're when you're, if you were going to post this, and I don't mind if you sell the paintings from our tutorials on YouTube or our academy, that not we retain the copyrights to them, but I want you to be able to. Yeah, let's put another leaf here. This came it out on top of those. See, and I'm doing. I was globbing up some texture to get away with that. So I'm still. It's still going to look thick because I'm just putting the texture on, see, like that. I'll put a little white with it to make this a little lighter. Okay. Imagine that brush on a 60-inch screen is about a foot in size. How close okay. are you? Yeah. So, so what you're talking about here is that when you're showing a painting for sale, like on your Pinterest page or Facebook page, show a close-up of your texture. That's going to make it sell. Show the close-up of the texture. That will. What can you make? What can you say about yours? That's a little bit different than everybody else's. How can you? How can you say yours? What makes your painting? 
you know, uh, why would somebody get it? I'm telling you, people love texture. And um, if I wanted just a few little highlights in the water here, maybe from these flowers. I think I had some in the other, but I'm just... I do one just, along the right. Right here, huh? No, no, for the back, for the back, for the back. Right there. From the guy above him. Yeah, there you go. There's my contribution. There you go. That's a nice-looking nice painting. And that's nice. And, and and these are wonderful. So if you haven't looked at the ones that, uh, you know, in our Art Academy, Academy, this is one of our uh, just a very simple bit, back to basics almost, textured ocean scene with rocks and so forth. We've got all kinds of, uh, we've got giant um, water lilies and stuff in our Wave and Water Masterclass. But, you know, on YouTube this month, we're really talking... Um, talking palette uh, knife. Talking palette knife. And... For instance, I'm not sure the order of this is which you're going to see first, but if you'll recall, this was one of the paintings that we was very popular a couple summers ago. Look what happens when you at, do it in palette knife. So, so that's alive. it's worth learning, <laughs> it's worth fun, and and if you want, um, and again, I would say do it small, uh, take a moment, do it small, and um, really enjoy the experience of that. And I, I I'm thinking this is a one thing I might do, I want to say this tree is a little bit brighter than those, so I might add a little bit more highlight on this tree. Now I'm looking, see how this 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 one is slightly lighter? So would you do it with a palette knife? Would you do it with a brush? I don't think it really matters. I think that the key thing is to get it lighter, right? The texture's really already there. The texture's there, so I just need to lighten up this tree a bit. And uh, I'm going to turn it sideways again. And I don't want a like a striped tie. I'm just gonna like do it here and pull. Very light pressure. You're just scraping ba over the. Barely touching it. I just want this edge. You know, trees. Uh, the 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 light maybe for whatever reason not the same. See, we want it to lighten up. And this brush was in water, so it's. Um, Still, that's okay. All right. So I want to say that this is, yeah, the texture's still there, and it's still not as light as I want it. So let's see. Let's start again right here. It's just almost going to white at this point. A couple of places. Not the whole tree, just a couple of places. How do we do? All right. Now I got it a little bit wide right there, so... Isn't that fun? So you just got to, <laughs> I've got to give it a diet here. A quick trim. Quick trim. Yeah, there we go. So, and then does it feel like it kind of ducks in right here? I feel like it's a sway back thing right there. This curve on this isn't good. This is what, now remember, I've, I've had done a palette knife, but I can come back here with texture on the brush and tone that back if I need to. See, I mean, I can, see what I mean? Can, I can make adjust. I, I can make adjustments if I need to. And I like this turquoise. What was neat about this picture was this light turquoise, the almost thalo green color on this tree. See this blue, light blue green color? It was really pretty on this tree. I'm just gonna uh, play. I want to play with that just a second. We're, we're done, but you know how you know how it goes, right? <laughs> Ginger's done, but she, and then she wants to play with it. There you go. I want this blue? <gasps> That's it. There. Wanted that tree to be, and then wherever there's a light, there's a dark to be a little bit lighter. Coming up here like this. There. And where's our wonderful greens? Because the textures that here, I can get away with doing this. I guess that's what I would tell you, because we've got the texture. And yes, you can come up here like this. And remember, you're just talking about the edge of any knife. You can come back here and use an edge. You need to, to get that to, to work. 
I don't know why I don't like the shape of this tree. I think but it's looking pretty good right now. You like it? Yeah. Okay. You took care of the sway back. You're skidding him back down where he got a little fat. Okay. What are you thinking? I'm thinking right here. Something's off. Yeah. Right here. Oh, that's better. See, I didn't know it was off until you fixed it. Yeah, right there. Yeah, that was it. Yeah, I mean, this it is just... It went a little too skinny too fast. Yeah, you it can't, yeah, it can't do that, right? But, you know, uh, all things considered, I think this is... Look at all the beautiful colors we've got, and look at the beautiful colors we've got in this... Um, on these, these lily pads, and look at that. You can just barely touch it. Play a little bit with the blues. Look at that. Just drag your brush across all this texture. Look at that. Isn't that great? You've got these beautiful colors. And I remember sometimes your, you know, pad, the edge of a pad will be lighter. Like, for instance, maybe just if you thought about a clock, say between, you know, 9 and 7, it's a little bit lighter on the edge of this pad right there. And that's, you've got to say, you know, not on all of them, but maybe it's just that one. Okay. So I think I want a little light dot back there, too, just to suggest something might be back there. A frog with a flashlight. Yeah, so it's something. Somebody's back in our trees. All right, you guys. I think you certainly have the general idea of how you paint, how you might take this painting and turn it into a palette knife painting. I almost feel like there's another tree here. Don't you see? It doesn't look like there's a tree here. You didn't on the original one. There is? It is. Of course, this is wider. Doesn't it look like there's a tree matter. here? You have the same distance. You scaled, you scaled it beautifully. Yeah, well, I appreciate it. You know, But, you know, that's almost a secret tree. We're not going to talk about it like a secret garden. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> all right, you guys. It's our secret lily pad. So, all right. We're just going to say, I hope, I hope you've enjoyed the live chat um, that we've done uh, in the premieres. And here's the thought. If your questions are not getting answered, email us. Use the contact us on our website or, um, and say, I'd like to have this question answered in the next um, next, next time you do the next time you do a shooting or next time you do a... Uh, premiere, please answer this. Whatever you're going to be up there next, any way you can answer this question. And you can use my name, but I'm going to say, like, um, you know, Kathy Fox wanted to know um, what's the best a palette knife brand to buy or whatever your question is. If you feel like you're just kind of, you, you missed out on the chat, we'll put you in the next one. Kathy Fox. I don't know Kathy Fox. I just made that up. Sounds oh, I good thought to... it was somebody we knew. No, we the don't way know. you said it with such I authority. Know. Ooh, look at that. I just felt like I'd use one of my Posca pens with the with this color, right? I, I see that. <laughs> Do you think it's too big? Should I do a smaller one? No, I like it. Do you like it? It blends in, yeah. Okay. That's gonna be that's real wet. Oh <laughs> Yeah, let's try. All right. I'll put a slash to it later. This is yeah. too wet. This, this yeah. has gotta dry, okay? Well let that dry. That's <laughs> You used a thick pen on that one. Yeah, we did a thick pen, pen That's on all right, that. That's good. You know, one thing we didn't do was any uh, color surprise. Did you notice that? I thought it was going to be your slash. Well, it could be, but let's 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 just get a little bit of the orange color in here because orange and in, in um, Turk. turquoise are compliments. As you can see on the color wheel, I have a color wheel on the screen for them. Yeah. See. So, see, just every once in a while, right? We just needed a little. A little color surprise. Yeah, just there you go. See? That's just, perfect. Just, you don't need much. Just yeah. so, Somebody doesn't even know it's there, but there it is. It's there. And all of a sudden they like the painting and they're not sure why. Yeah, that's their why. All right. So have fun, you guys. And uh, we'll see you next time. And uh, your comments on that you leave uh, are always appreciated and read. Thanks, everyone. Catch you on the next show, live or premiere, whichever we do. Wait a minute, i got to get everything set right so I know what I'm doing. All right, now I know what I'm doing. Bye, everyone. Bye. Well, you guys, I don't think I can look at another commercial about how to unstop the toilet or um, maybe you two can learn to draw that, you know, we...
we have to have those in our video in order to kind of cover some costs. But I thought it would be fun as long as we were doing it to put a commercial in for ourselves. So here's the, here's the commercial from me to you. I want you to have a wonderful day. I want you to be the artist you can be. I want you to get up in the morning and say, today's the day I'm going to be happier than I was yesterday. This is my commercial and wishing you the bestest, happiest day of your life. And art hugs from John and I. I'm a student, I say with glee, of Ginger Cook's Academy. Take your time and do not rush. Use ruby satin silver brush. Don't use black and mix the green. Learn what blend and grayscale mean. Yes, I hope each day to earn coaching praises as I learn. I'll be an artist, wait and see. Ginger means the world to me.